Like I said, it's 30 minutes in and out, nothing too crazy. Remember, make sure core nice and tight and stretch out that back. Oh, and remember, when you add on weight, it ain't gotta be a lot of weight. You see, this is just a 10 that I'm adding on. Seat adjustment is everything, as well as how you maximize the pad to the chest. Yeah. You're not pulling from your hands, you're pulling from your elbows. If it's a point that you can't build that mind and muscle connection, I would say slow down a rep, that would be one. And then two, increase or lighten the weight. So today we're gonna do a quick back routine. This back routine should only take you probably about 30 minutes max. We're gonna keep it real small with the exercises. No back, I mean, no biceps whatsoever. Biceps are a little cooked from yesterday. So biceps are gonna be engaged throughout this entire motion. So the first exercise we're gonna do, we're gonna do lat pull downs. I do wanna, I do wanna set a disclaimer. I did not warm up before this exercise, so I'm actually gonna work, I'm gonna warm up throughout the exercise. If you've been following me for a while, I don't recommend really doing this. But like I said, I'm tight on time today, and I did wanna get a little work in today. So I'm gonna show you how to knock out this quick back exercise. All you need, 30 minutes. It's gonna be quick in and out. We're probably gonna pick anywhere between three to four exercises as we go along. It depends on the availability of some of the machines, but let's get busy. So because I didn't warm up, I'm gonna start off super light. I'm gonna just do 15 reps, nothing too crazy. Like I said, if you've been following me for a while, you already know what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep that pad up so we can work abs a little bit more. In this particular motion, you notice I'm gonna rock a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit of a rock. But even when you're rocking, make sure you keep that core nice and tight. I know I said 15, but I did 20. It is what it is. We're gonna make sure we pick up on the next one. So like I said, this is actually gonna be my filler set. I'm gonna do two filler sets, nice and light. I'm actually probably gonna keep it on the same weight, and then I'm gonna move up for the next three sets. So the three sets is going, the next three sets are gonna be my actual working set. I'm gonna keep it fairly light today. I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the time and attention, more so than just really trying to load my body with a lot of weight. I've actually hit back, I think twice this week, maybe once, I can't remember. But overall, I do know my body is a little bit more taxed, but at the end of the day, like I said, I wanna put in a little bit of work. I kinda, I don't feel like I hit back like I should have hit because I've only hit like a couple exercises. So this is why, I'm, this, is, this is the main reason why I wanted to knock out this 30 minute back workout. But like I said, there's no biceps on this back workout. So remember, this is gonna be the second filler set. At the end of the day, we doing a little bit of motion. If you notice when I do lap pull downs, I do lap pull downs a variety of different ways. I'm using an actual rock to make sure that I kind of warm up my body a little bit more just because I missed out and I, well, I say I skipped out on the cardio today. Like I said, I don't recommend doing this, but at the end of the day, if you really, really tight for time and you've been working out for a while, this is a little cheat code that you can do. But like I said, I don't really recommend doing this. Always really find the time to properly warm up before you start exercising your exercise activity because if the body's not warmed up properly, remember, we can increase the chance of you getting injured. This is something I've been doing for a long time, so I, I'm very in tune with my body, know how much weight I should be using, and know how I can kind of warm up the body in different ways. Even when we're doing fast-paced motions, when we're doing a lot of these exercises, I need you to make sure we still connect in with the mind and the muscle while we go through the entire motion. If it's a point that you can't build that mind and muscle connection, I would say slow down a rep, that would be one. And then two, increase or lighten the weight because you can kind of get that with both things. Sometimes the weight may be too light where you can't really feel the area that you're trying to train. And then sometimes the weight can be a little too heavy to a point, same thing. And do me a favor, man, a lot of y'all kind of miss this. When you're doing this exercise, when we're at the top, remember, stretch your back, stretch out through your back. When you're coming down, we're squeezing the back, but we're still focused on the lats. I need you to really focus on lat engagement. And for those who aren't able to focus on lat engagement, do me a favor and make sure you're incorporating the assisted machine pull-ups. I keep telling y'all, I'm somebody that can crank out a lot of weight when it comes down to weighted pull-ups. But there's no better lat contraction that I experience outside of assisted weighted pull-up machines. I don't know why people avoid this, but I'm giving you free game, man. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. And as you can see, we in top tier shape. You're dealing with a professional, not an influencer. I'm a professional. I've been training since 2009. It's currently 2023, you hear me? So do understand, 
The game that I'm giving you is from a highly trained professional, not just somebody just is doing this to do this. Training is my full time job, you feel me? So we gonna actually go into one more set. I'm gonna keep it at this particular weight. The next, the following set, I'm actually going to increase the weight because I feel like my body will be a little bit better. See, I could have avoided all of this if I just warmed up. Remember, warm ups take anywhere between five to 10 minutes. But like I said, I wanna keep this workout super simple, 30, 30 minutes, in and out, a few exercises, you get what you want and you feeling good and this is helping you build to be able to look how you wanna look. And I'm talking about you gonna look immaculate if you stay consistent. Let's get it. So remember, when we in these last two sets, we're not executing any type of rocking. We are keeping it short, sweet, and simple. Focus on that mind and muscle connection. If you've noticed, I do talk a lot of shit about time under tension, but I actually do perform a lot of time under tension. I just like to be joking with y'all with that, but I do like to be clear. Like I said, time under tension, progressive overload, as well as mind and muscle connections are three things I would highly recommend you focus on. The more you're able to connect with the muscle while you're training, the easier it is for you to develop it and break it down the way that you want. Because remember, when we're in the gym and we're doing these exercises, we're breaking the body down. That's why we need to make sure right after our workouts that we're properly fueling the body so the body can grow, mainly when we give it the adequate amount of rest. This is why nutrition is very important. This doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're trying to lose weight or gain weight. Once we work out, I need you to understand we are breaking the body down. In order for the body to help develop, develop in the right ways we want, we need to make sure we're properly nourishing it in the right ways as well and make sure we're maximizing our recovery. Let's get it. Super easy. And as you can see, my grip, I'm not doing nothing crazy with the grip. Normal grip. Make sure you choke the bar nice and tight. Chest tall. Remember, stretch out that back. Squeeze, and we good. Easy, just 10. Super, super sit, sweet 10. So another thing we do need to be mindful as well when we're training. If you're, you're locking out, full lockout, right? You have to be mindful that if you're going heavy with the weight, you're putting a lot of strain on your rotator cuff. So do me a favor, if you're somebody that's doing a full lockout, start off, mainly if you haven't been doing lockouts in general, start off with lockouts with lighter weight, but you don't have to lock out each and every time. And so that's the main reason why a lot of people, mainly in the calisthenics, calisthenics industry or the calisthenics realm, a lot of them have a lot of rotator cuff issues because they're doing entirely too many pull-ups and at lockout, at the end of the day, they're putting a lot of strain on their ligaments, tendons, and joints when they do heavy weight. Because we all know when it comes down to calisthenics, you gonna have to start throwing some weighted pull-ups in there. This is right here gonna be the last set. Like I said, I'm gonna increase the weight just a little bit, nothing too crazy. Like I said, I've worked back a couple times throughout the week, but I've only did a few exercises. I've never had a full back day. So I wanna make sure that I'm actually breaking it down the way that I want. And what I'm gonna end up doing at this point is giving it about three to four days worth of rest. Let's get it. Sweet spot, 10. Let's get it. Woo. So I'm starting to warm up, so that's why you, see, you saw me do a couple more than I said I was going to do. But another thing I do want you to be mindful as well when we're actually doing this exercise is stop pulling through the hands. You should be guiding and pulling your body through the elbows. Pull through the elbows. That's one of the main reasons why a lot of y'all actually can't get the lack of traction that you're looking for because you're pulling from the wrong area. You're not pulling from your hands, you're pulling from your elbows. Squeeze the back as much as you can. And remember, you don't have to dip the bar down. This is not a pull, this is not a, a, a pull down, if you notice. If you pulling and you coming down like this, I'm telling you right now, you ain't really working the back and you're not able to keep the tension in the back. And one thing we wanna do when we're trying to develop and train an area to maximize our potential on muscle growth, we do need to understand one thing. We want to keep the tension in the area as much as possible. We don't want the tension to shift for other different places. And this is why form and technique is very important if you're trying to get the development that you want. We're going to move on to the next exercise. But I will admit, if I would have properly warmed up, I would have been able to get a little bit more out of this exercise because I'm not going to fake. That last set is when I actually felt good. But like I said, I don't have a lot of time. So we're going to utilize the time that we have and we're going to move it right along. Remember this, 
seat adjustment is everything, as well as how you maximize the pad to the chest. You do want the pad on the chest, but you don't want it this far. So for example, that if you can tell, I can't grab this. That means the pad is a little too far for me. So what I would do is I would adjust it. Like I said, these are great ways to actually develop and build more, well, I would say better form and better technique as well. That's why I'm a big advocate on using machines in general. And it's an easier way for me to actually load the body without having to work on a lot of stability each and every time. Like I said, some of these exercises are gonna help with stability and some of these aren't, you're not gonna use stability at all. That's another reason why I like certain machines. Certain machines require stability, certain machines don't at the end of the day. Like I said before, all machines aren't created equal. But one thing we're gonna do today is we're actually not gonna use the pad first. We're gonna wait on the pad. I'm gonna use the pad when I get heavier with the weight and I'm gonna start off with bottom. We're gonna do 10 and then I'm gonna do top with the 10. Make sure core nice and tight. Make sure your glutes are stabilizing and you're not rocking with those feet. Squeeze the back as much as you can. And same thing once again, we're pulling through the elbows. I'm warming up the first few sets. Some machines, I do like the fact that they ISO, but in this case, I love the fact that this is dual. Like I said, if you somebody that wants to work on a little bit more core, core stability, don't use the pad. If you somebody that wants to go up with a little bit more weight without having to work on form, without having to really work on a lot of core stability, then use the pad. As we go up, like I said, Much I'm gonna better. do two filler sets for each exercise. So it's gonna look like I'm doing a total of five sets. I'm gonna do two filler sets just to kind of see how the body feels. In this particular case, because I didn't warm up, I'm going to do anywhere between 10 to 20 reps, depending on how I feel. When I go up with the weight, I'm not looking about maxing the weight, going super heavy, because like I said before, I've already trained back this week. So what I wanna do, I just wanna put some blood in the back, I wanna stress it out, to get a little bit more work put in because I haven't done a lot of back exercises. So you're not gonna see me crank a bunch of weight today. This is gonna give you different ways that you can actually break down the body and achieve the results that you're looking for. But do understand, you can use the pad, you cannot use the pad. Going from there, just make sure your seat adjustment is adjusted properly. This time around, I'm actually gonna go up a little bit more. I feel like this is gonna be a little bit better for me mainly with my foot drive and everything. So at the end of the day, make sure you kind of play with the adjustments to get what you want from the machine. And then check this out. We're going right back to it. Remember, pull through the elbows. You want to focus on pulling through the elbows. Abs should be nice and tight. Chest should be nice and tall. And boom, let's get it. Don't forget about that breathing. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. You need oxygen in, the, in those muscles, yo you're not breathing, you can fatigue a lot faster. Man, it feels good. And I ain't even using a lot of weight, that's the crazy part. So when it comes down to actually using a pad, do be mindful of this. Remember, when we using a pad, we want to be able to grab without overstressing or straining the back. So right here is still a little too far for me. I'm gonna bring it into about a setting of four. See how that feels. This is perfectly good for me. Because the biggest thing is when you drop the weight, you want to be able to easily let the weight down without having to tuck in like this. That's going to strain the back, mainly if it's a point that we're using a substantial amount of weight. So I always say practice with your lot, light and moderate weight as if it's already heavy. Because you're going to take some of these techniques from the lighter and heavy weight, I mean from the lighter and moderate weight, you're going to use some of those same techniques when it comes down to lifting the heavy weight. So my biggest thing is always approach each and every exercise as if it's heavy ass weight. Because at the end of the day, you're already mentally adjusted to what you should be doing in that scenario, more so than you having to strain an area or overstress an area because you weren't set up properly. So just make sure the machine and everything is set up properly so we can avoid a lot of that stuff. Because I try to get y'all to understand, it only takes that one injury. It only takes that one injury. Trust me when I say that. You think shit's sweet, blah, 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 you do what you do, it only takes that one injury. But at the end of the day, we, now we're done with the filler sets. This is actually gonna be the working sets. Each working set at this point, I'm going to use the pad. That's one to make sure the pad was set up properly. I like to do it between like one, maybe three reps, just to make sure it's set up just the right way before I actually start loading my body with the weight. But we about to get into it again. So I'm gonna bring, I think I'm gonna bring it to seven, nothing too crazy. Remember, today is more so time under tension. Abs nice and tight, don't drop that chest. Some of y'all like doing this and then go like this. No, don't keep the chest tall, break it back down. 
There we go. And remember, pull through the elbows. I'm gonna go up a little bit more because I did 12 and I'm trying to shoot for 10. So if you have a rep range that says three sets of 10, do me a favor, try to make sure the weight is applicable to 10. Not meaning that you should be able to do 15, you should be able to do 20. If you're able to do 12, that's just an indicator that you should increase the weight a little bit, but be careful with increasing the weight a little too much because now you can put yourself in a position of only doing eight, mainly if the recommended was 10. So do be mindful of that because everybody's endurance is built different. Me personally, I'm big on endurance. I'm a king of endurance when it comes down to it. You ain't gonna outwork me, know that. So I'm gonna increase it just a little bit. In this case, remember, the pen is gonna be probably 20 pounds, sometimes 15, depending on what gym you are. My favorite, which is the funniest, is when you get the machines that say one, two, three, four, because those weights are significantly different at the end of the day. So if you got a, you got a gym and you notice that with the plates, it says one, two, three, four, be very careful when you go to five. Five is generally like a hundred or something like that. So just be mindful of those little things. So I tell I try to get y'all to understand that each and every machine is built different. Every machine is not the same. It's not gonna give you the same feel. That's why the brands are different. It's a life, this is a lifetime machine, so it's not too bad. The basic, basic machine, something that's generally like at all types of gyms. But if you know, you know, my favorite machine of all times is without a doubt hoist. I love how it's easy for you to be able to keep the tension in the muscle while you're training without having to worry about straining ligaments, tendons, and joints, because the objective is while it rocks, it helps assist to keep the tension in the muscle so you can really break it down the way that you want. I told y'all, if you watched my last video, leg extensions is one of my favorite machines to actually load weight on without having to worry about unnecessary tension on the patella and on the knee itself when you're actually doing leg extensions. Because remember, the knee is vulnerable in that particular motion. That's another reason why I'll tell y'all, keep it real light. But we're gonna talk about that another day. Let's get back to it. So one thing, if you've noticed, within this last two months, I've been keeping it fairly light. I haven't been using a lot of belts or anything to that nature. But do make sure if you're somebody that's going super heavy with the weight and you're a little conscious about lower back safety, also do, do understand that when you're wearing a belt, the beautiful thing about a belt is it actually helps keep the tension and make sure you stabilize the core at the end of the day. So belt does serve a couple different purposes. Well, make sure you adding some of this gear in, mainly if you're somebody that's training at a tense level. It's okay to use uh, wrist wraps. It's okay to use uh, straps to load a little bit more weight when it comes down to the forearms giving out. It's okay to wear belts, but you shouldn't use this on an everyday scenario. This is another reason why I say sometimes kind of scale back from all of that stuff. I haven't used any of that stuff in about two months now. So when I actually start getting into the peak of me lifting a lot heavier, mainly when my body is able to consume a little bit more, a little bit more food because I've trained my body to kind of not eat as much right now. I told you I scale back a lot. Like right now, believe it or not, man, I'm 158. I'm 158. We only eat twice a day. We focusing on hydration like crazy. I'm big on a smoothie a day. We do a green smoothie. Then we do a fruit-based smoothie every, every day. And then going from there is just eating twice. And then going from there is making sure I'm hydrated throughout the day, not consuming so much water at one time. A lot of y'all need to stop that. Don't consume so much water at one time. So if you're somebody that's, that has a gallon of water and you wake up at six o'clock and then you crush your gallon of water by 10 o'clock, do understand you really just gonna piss a lot of that water out. The body didn't have enough time to actually absorb it. So make sure you're spacing out the, your water intake. What I like to do is every hour, like a, a bottle of water, maybe two bottles of water, before you know it, you'll be able to knock out your 10 to 12 bottles of water, mainly if you're somebody that's struggling with water with ease. Space it out, don't overconsume so much at one time. And a great way to know if you're overconsuming water is the indicator of your urine, the color. If it's clear, now's a 10, you're just pissing out water in reality. If it's a little yellow, you're moving in the right direction. If it's a point that is extremely yellow, do understand, you need to hydrate your body. So do be aware of that because hydration is very key when it comes down to training. A lot of y'all like coming into these workouts dehydrated, not understanding that you being dehydrated, once again, increases the chance of you being injured. So make sure you're properly hydrating the body so that way you can maximize your results and you can reduce the chance of you being fatigued or, you, or you're fatiguing yourself when it comes down to tackle a lot of these exercises. Like I said, a lot of y'all love coming in here doing that and I don't recommend it at all. You feel me? I don't recommend that. But let's get back to it. Remember, we ain't crazy heavy with the weight. Right now we're at 
140. That's what we're gonna cap out at. This is gonna be the last set on this. Coming right here. Remember, chest nice and tall. Make sure you grip as tight as you can. Your foot placement should be nice and solid. And pull. Whew. That felt good. Only needed 10, we're gonna leave it at that. Now we're moving on to the next. Can't even lie to y'all. I think this is literally my favorite back exercise. We're gonna do dual. So I'm probably max gonna add another 40, I mean add another 25. Like I said, I'm gonna keep it super light today. We're gonna do about 20 reps of this though. Chest tall, remember, keep that chest nice and tall, abs tight. And if you need, remember, use, use the pad. Whew, I'm trying to tell you, it's without a doubt one of my favorites, favorites for sure. I'm actually gonna break it down. I did dual first. I'm gonna put a quarter on there and I'm gonna do ISO work and I'm gonna just do 10 at a time with the ISO work. Like I said, this is not, nothing too crazy. We already in exercise number three. They got one more exercise after this and we out of this. Funny thing is I do feel as though I wanna start adding deadlifts into my back day. Cause deadlifts, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I avoid deadlifts like shit. Not saying that deadlifts is a bad exercise. I do need to incorporate a little bit more but it's just, I think it's honestly one of my least favorite exercises. I do a lot of back squats, but this, before the end of this year, I'm gonna start incorporating fr front squats for the first time. Cause I've actually never did front squats a lot. Mainly because I think it's more so because I haven't got over the hump of being able to push as much weight as I want. But one thing I do know is, once I start incorporating those front squats, back squats are going to get that much easier. But I always try to get y'all to understand, don't try to do too much at one time or try to get so strong within month, one month. That's another reason why for me, when it comes down to building more strength, I take 10 months at a time and then take two months off. I like to use the first month, maybe month and a half to kind of prep my body for the heavy lifting, load my body with a little bit more food, slowly but surely, more so than force feed myself. So a lot of y'all that's doing that force feeding, you tripping. I'm not a big fan of force feeding, mainly because of how I scale back so much. You gotta remember, in fall and winter, I'm easily eating anywhere between four to maybe six meals a day, right? So when it comes down to spring and summer, I scale back to only twice. So I do try to get y'all to understand, you train your stomach just like you train your body. So for me, I'm not a big fan of just trying to consume, 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 but I do know if I can consume a little bit more, then I can push a little bit more when it comes down to my workouts. But at the end of the day, I, I'm slow and steady with winning this race because at the end of the day, if I feed my body slowly but surely, it's a lot easier for me to avoid a lot of the extra side effects of stomach cramping. And we ain't gonna go into the list of that, all of those things right now. But trust me, if you take time and stop forcing like one month or two months or three month bulks or trying to get stronger in such a small amount of time, you'll be able to get more out of your training as well as your physique will be able to handle it. Because one of my clients just recently told me, worked out with me yesterday, he's like, wow, you're still able to lift a lot of the weight that you're lifting and you're, you're 10 pounds down. And I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm still scaling back on the weight. I'm not doing it as frequently. Don't get me wrong, you are gonna see small dips in your strength within training yourself like this for 10 months. But in actuality, you're not gonna lose that much strength. If it was a point you was able to do, a great example is chest press, three sets of 10, right? 100 pound dumbbells, right? You're not gonna be able to do three sets. You might be able to do one, and a half. So you might be able to do the first set, 10 sets, and then the second set, you'll probably decline to maybe like six or maybe eight. But when it comes down to that third set, you're not gonna be able to crank as much as you want because the water isn't there, the muscle isn't there. So you have to expect when it's time to cut to not lift as much. And then you do need to be very cautious of the fact that you're not intaking as much when it comes down to the meals, which is gonna allow you to perform a little bit, a, a little bit better, or I would say perform at a higher level at that point. So do understand those small things, but do understand if you take the time to get stronger, like slowly but surely, not trying to force so much, for one, you can avoid a lot of injuries, and then two, like I said, you will be able to retain more strength than you possibly think. So I'm at, like I said, I'm gonna add another quarter on this, and we're gonna get busy. But I do want you to be very mindful of retaining some of this strength too. You need to make sure you're either incorporating that exercise incorporate similar exercises because anything you stop doing for a long period of time you're going to have to reinduce your body too there's no way around it trust me when i say to think about a lot of athletes that take two three years on their body can't handle the the training their body can't handle the actual in-game experience because of the time that they took off 
do you understand your body adapts to whatever you do, whether you take it away from it or you put it to it. So always make sure you're taking your time to be able to reinduce your body into it so that way you can be able to maximize the way that you want. Let's get it. Remember, we're going to ISO on this one. I'm actually going to lock in on the pad. So remember, when you do the pad, I like to adjust it first before you actually go into the exercise so that way you know it's exactly where you want it to be, more so than trying to fight for a position when you start. In this particular exercise, I'm tired of y'all trying to just pull down from the top unless your arms are super long, but just walk it down, man, walk it down. Time rate attention does show how strong you really are. That's why I say if you're somebody that's doing progressive overload with a little bit of time rate attention, you're gonna get stronger a lot faster. But just allow your body to process what you're putting it through and make sure you're maximizing your rest. Let's get it. Oh, and remember, when you add on weight, it ain't gotta be a lot of weight. You see, this is just a 10 that I'm adding on. Not another quarter, not a 45. Sometimes be realistic with your add-ons. You can see even add on five pounds, 2.5 pounds. It don't always gotta be a quarter or a 45. 10s work just as good. Like I said, mainly in your progressive overload, you wanna make sure you're not biting off too much that you can chew too. You gotta be realistic with that because if you do a little too much, it can take away from the other exercises that you're about to implement. So make sure you're being very strategic with your progressive overload and make sure that you're not doing entirely too much because it is gonna affect the future sets and the other exercises that you might be doing. And then two, you gotta be realistic. If you're doing something you ain't know you can do, you can easily get injured as well. But remember, what we are trying to do is we wanna be able to be as healthy as possible for as long as possible. You're not training to get injured. It's not what we're doing. We're not training to get injured. So be very strategic with how much weight you're putting on when we're doing progressive overload. But like I said, we keep it nice and light today. Nice and light. And I'm gonna switch the side. Instead of doing left again, I'm gonna tax the right real quick and then go right back to it. It's gonna be the last set too. King Fate, this is without a doubt one of my favorite back exercises. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I like using more of uh, the lat pull down bar or the traditional lat pull down bar. What this'll do? That wider bar, you're able to connect a little bit better and you get better range of motion. Cause this, cause of how it's rounded, kind of cuts off. I like how it's flat and then goes round. You can kind of pull it more and get a better contraction. But it is what it is. It's gonna be the last exercise. Remember, the objective of this whole workout, 30 minutes in and out. If you're gonna have rest, make sure you keep your rest within 30 seconds, nothing too crazy. And that should be you just resting or actually putting on a little bit more weight, nothing too crazy. But remember, do be mindful with this particular exercise. You do not need to load your body with a lot of weight. Just focus on the contraction. Make sure your hamstrings is nice and tight. Make sure your core nice and tight as well as your lower back. I need y'all to make sure, remember, we were actually working abs each and every exercise. Some of us may fail to forget this. You're working abs each and every exercise. That's another reason why I say if you do want to throw the weight belt in from time to time, it's easier to kind of help keep the tension in the actual core, more so than you trying to consistently engage with yourself. That's a little cheat code to the actual uh, weight belt. Because sometimes, I'm going to be real with y'all, I'm not wearing a weight belt to protect my lower back, I'm actually wearing a weight belt like it's a daggone waist trainer. Keep it real. I don't know why y'all hate waist trainers. Y'all be some haters with that waist trainer shit. Don't get me wrong, some people put the waist trainer a little too tight, and I understand that. But in actuality, a waist trainer can actually help you develop mind and muscle connection when it comes down to the abs. Don't, don't be fooled by some of this bullshit a lot of people be saying. Because at the end of the day, there's pros and cons to everything that you do when you pick an exercise and using equipment. Just like how you use uh, wrist straps. Wrist straps at the end of the day, you can still leave your forearms vulnerable if you don't focus on developing forearm strength. So I always have to tell people, understand when somebody's speaking on their opinion or they focusing on the facts. There's gonna be pros and cons to everything that you do. Ain't nothing wrong, ladies, with rocking a waist trainer. Trust me when I say that. And then one thing, be mindful too, this exercise is unisex, man. It can be for males or it can be for females. Anybody can actually get great results from this particular exercise because there's really no such thing at the end of the day. We want to play, play this and let's keep it a buck. There's no such thing as women exercises for a fruit. There are specific exercises that may be tailored towards women developing their bodies a certain way, but in actuality, each and every one of us can do each and every exercise. That's another reason why y'all see me do some of the feminine exercises. It is what it is. If I want to develop and grow my glutes, 
why not use what's working more so than avoid it because I don't like the appeal of how it looks. I want the motherfucking results. I ain't worried about how it looks. Same thing when it comes down to nutrition. A lot of people at the end of the day like to focus on, oh, it tastes good, or, oh, it tastes bad. What you don't realize when it comes down to shitty eating, and I'm gonna keep it real with y'all, you've allowed your palate to develop the taste buds for that shitty eating. What you need to do is understand that we need to recondition the body to understand that this is where we're going about this first. Because everything that's healthy ain't nasty. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I'm tired of y'all trying to play the healthy route. Everything that's healthy ain't nasty. And everything that's bad for you ain't good. Let's keep it real. But we back at it. I had a little bit of weight and I'm going to leave it at this. This, to be real with you, is actually an exercise I would generally like doing with the waist belt. But at the end of the day, like I said, I ain't using a waist belt for a little bit of time. We probably got, what, two, three more weeks before we start using a waist belt again, and then we're gonna get back to it. Like I said, I generally like to use a waist belt sometimes to not only just break the resistance from my lower back getting injured, but also just, just making sure I'm able to keep the tension in my core without having to constantly think about it each and every exercise. Cause I'm with y'all too. It gets kind of annoying just making sure you keep the abs nice and contracted each and every time you do an exercise. But one thing I do need y'all to understand, a lot of y'all don't have the development that you want because you don't understand the technicalities that come with each and every exercise. And it can, it can get confusing for real, for real, because there's so many different ways to do an exercise. But let's get back to it because I feel like I'm just cheating for rest. Let's get it. Whew, feel, too, feel good, not too bad. But remember, make sure we're not doing a lot of rocking, we're not doing a lot of shifting when we're doing a lot of these exercises because you're moving the feet, things to that nature, you're taking away from the area that you're trying to break down because now you shift resistance to the feet as you're shifting them. So do we make, make sure nice and tight, keep everything nice and solid so we can effectively break down the area so that way we properly nourish it and if we make sure we maximize our recovery, we can get the results that we're looking for at the end of the day. We only got one more set, and then we out of here. So I ain't gonna fix the y'all. I'm gonna jump straight into this motherfucker, cause I'm ready to go. Like I said, it's 30 minutes, in and out, nothing too crazy. Remember, make sure core nice and tight, and stretch out that back. So just to give you a, a fill in too, we're doing two a days today. But I always say be careful with two a days, because a lot of y'all like to schedule y'all two a days too close in, and not give your body enough rest or you like to hit the same area twice. Two days later is gonna be legs and abs. That's all we're gonna do, legs and abs. When you're doing your two days, I like to schedule it drastic towards the top of the day and towards the end of the day. So that way you can nourish the body properly, you can hydrate the body properly. And then on top of that, I like to make sure I'm not doing the same thing that I did before. So another thing I like to do with two days is, I like to do cardio in the morning sometimes then I might hit upper body or lower body later. Or it's a scenario if I wanna do two strength training days in my two days, I might do upper body earlier and then I might do lower body later. So just make sure you're being very strategic when it comes down to your two days so that way you can maximize your training because this can be an easy way to overtrain, to outwork and get injured. I do not recommend doing chest twice that day. If that's something that you wanna do and your body can't handle it, by all means, do what you're gonna do. Well, me personally, I like to make sure that I give my body enough rest when it comes down to two-day workouts because two-day workouts are very taxing to the body. <clears throat> Nine to 10, too, you might see your midday, if you're not able to get sleep, you might see your energy drop off towards the end of the day. So when it's time for you to actually hit that second workout, you might not have enough energy as what you thought. And this is why I say sometimes do cardio. It could be cardio second half, and you can go for your lift the first half. But just make sure when you're going about two-days, you're very strategic and you're doing it the right way. So that way it doesn't hinder you from the results that you're looking for, as well as increase the chance of you getting injured. Cause like I said, it's so easy to outwork and overtrain yourself. But it's your boy, Coach K. This was a 30 minute back workout. Remember, make sure you keep 30 seconds in between each exercise. Trust me, this will help you maximize the way that you want. Make sure before you come to the gym, mainly if you're training early or even if you're training even, you properly hydrate yourself. I actually did this workout fasted. All of my morning workouts are generally fasted. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I generally don't eat till about like 10, sometimes 12. That's just a natural thing for me. It's not on purpose. It's just a natural thing for me because I generally train my clients at four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock generally to about, I would say anywhere between eight to 10. So depending on the day is really gonna determine how I schedule my personal training session. And nine to 10, when I'm dealing with my clients, I don't like, I'm not the trainer that likes eating 
while I'm training somebody, because at the end of the day, I don't like, I, I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me, but hey, that's just personal for me. But like I said, it's your boy, Coach K. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'm gonna catch you on the next video.